Uh, the question is, can the mainstream media successfully separate Kamala from the economic problems that she helped to create? Joining me now is business and market analyst Seth Denson. Seth, uh, you, you are very keen and privy to all things that have to do with the economy. You're an analyst. You've studied this stuff. You've researched it for, for years and years. Can, can the mainstream media, is there any way other than just manipulating search results and, and headlines from former uh, uh, publications, is there a way for them to really successfully separate Kamala from the disaster that the current economy is under her administration? I mean, they'll certainly try, David, but I think the American people are smarter than that. And, and we got to give them credit that they're going to recognize. My, by the way, I hope they keep talking about the economy. Please, God, let the Democratic Party keep talking about the economy. That's all I want to talk about, because voters overwhelmingly trust President Trump with the economy over Kamala Harris or Joe Biden or literally anybody else they can roll out there. Because Americans actually are recognizing what's going on day in and day out. There's talk of a recession. But if you ask the average American today, they feel like we're in a recession. Their dollar doesn't go nearly as far as it once did. Their wages are not going nearly as far. They're not climbing as much as inflation. They're working multiple jobs. And all that the Harris-Biden administration seems to want to talk about these days is more nanny state programs rather than a booming economy that will drive Americans to prosperity. Yeah, break it down for us. Go a little deeper. What exactly, what, what, what one, two, three things can you actually point to that the Biden-Harris administration did that's led to this disaster that we're all in, that all Americans are feeling right now? Yeah, num number one, they shut down the Keystone Pipeline and they stopped drilling energy. The United States could be a net energy exporter. And we can all talk about electric vehicles or solar or wind or all these other things, but we got to walk and chew gum at the same time and realize that the globe operates on fossil fuels right now. And the United States could be one of the largest suppliers of that globally, certainly everything we're doing here in the United States. Instead, we go buy that from our adversaries. And that is a major impact on the overall cost of goods and services because everything we buy centers around that. The second, the Build Back Better debacle. These were, you know, all of the, the things that the Biden and Harris administration, that's exactly right. Inflation is driven mostly by government overspending. In June, I'm sorry, July, David, we saw the largest deficit of government income versus government spending in history at $250 billion. The debt has gotten to a place that if we shut off the federal government today, did not spend one more dime on Social Security, Medicare, defense, or anything, it would take us 30 years, David, to pay that off. So this continued spending that the government is doing is a catastrophe. And then the third thing is, I'm sorry, we gotta have a tough conversation. We can't fund every little thing that's going on around the world. We don't have the money to do it. Mm. We're putting that on the backs of our kids and our grandkids. And unfortunately, what's happening right now is we continue to do that under this administration. Well, and add to it, how many billions and billions of dollars have uh, we forked over in the care of these illegal immigrants that just come trotting into our company, country, want all these kickbacks. They're getting, you know, housing in very nice luxury hotels. They're getting food cards, the, the EBT cards. They're getting, you know, uh, uh, phones, phone, pay, phone cards as well. Uh, do you have any idea on how much money we've spent as a nation on illegal immigrants over the last three years, three and a half years? Well, it's hundreds of billions of dollars, but that's on what we know, right? So it's about $150 billion is what we're looking at right now, but that's based on what we know is in the country. The reality is that number is likely maybe even a third of what is really here. So the estimates are that we have spent close to half a trillion dollars between healthcare, education, housing, shelter, food, all of the things that we are doing, not to mention all of the things that we're trying to do around border patrol and border security and all of those other things. So the dollars just keep going out the door. And candidly, David, we don't have them. We are spending money like a rock star in a nightclub these days, and we can't seem to slow down. And unfortunately, what will happen is history will repeat itself. And we are staring straight in the face of becoming the next Greece, the great empire that failed because they couldn't understand how to control their pocketbook.
Yeah, or Venezuela that was at one point 20 years ago a very wealthy uh, country, one of the most wealthiest countries in the Western hemif Hemisphere. Uh, they they were they were prosperous in all things, and they started going the way of socialism, which is again seems like where this Democrat Party of today wants to take us: bigger government overreach, bigger, bigger government power, uh, take more money from the citizens, tax them more, uh, and then and then add to it everything they're doing for inflation. So give us the flip side of the coin. Underneath President Trump, what did he do? So let's give our viewers a reminder, underneath his administration, what did he do uh, to help bring inflation down, to make, the, everybody remembers the market, stock market was going through the roof, 401ks uh, continued to increase. What did he do specifically that led to those increases in the economy? Yeah, David, and while the stock market was great, the reality is the stock market isn't the supermarket. What President Trump did was he set economic policy around deregulation, drill baby drill, which he said again today. He talked about the things that we were doing to reduce our, our foreign dependency, not only on oil, but foreign goods. We was tough on China and our foreign adversaries, ultimately bringing back jobs and growing the economy. The reality is the government, cannot spend enough to grow the economy in perpetuity. It has to be the American consumer. And the policies under the previous Trump administration, I'm confident will be the policies under the next Trump administration, will ultimately drive economic prosperity. We were at a place when President Trump took office that the economy was in extra innings, David. It was ready for a recession. It is like clockwork. It comes around every number of years. We were there, but the policies of the Trump administration, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the deregulation components, all of these things, pro-business climate, drove this economy forward when it should have been slowing down. I'm hopeful we can see that again. It, you make a very clear contrast between the mindset and philosophy of governing that we are, as Americans, faced with. A Kamala uh, Walsh administration, you're going to see more spending, more government overreach, all the stuff they're saying about you know what they'll do now that they haven't done in the last three and a half years is absolutely just absurd. They're not. She's not going to get tough on the border. Meanwhile, we've got the four years underneath President Trump, and you just explained very eloquently uh, exactly why the recession stayed off under his administration, and uh, most likely what we'll see again if we if he gets back in office. Seth Denson, my brother, thank you so much for joining this evening. Appreciate you. Good to see you, buddy.